Hi, Imagination Room here. Here's a fun activity to share with your family. It's called the Colored Flower Experiment. It's vaguely educational, teaching your kids about plants, capillaries, and how they hydrate, and transpiration, and all that good stuff. But it's mostly to create a sense of wonder. The idea is to see what happens when the flowers suck up colored dyes into their stalks and up into their petals. The petals change color, and depending on the colors you feed the flowers, you can make different patterns. First, you need white petal flowers. You can either wait until a rainy day when your next bouquet drops into your lap or pick up a bouquet the next time you're at the store. While any white flowers will work, flowers from supermarkets tend to work better than flowers from nurseries. Why? Because flowers from greeneries tend to be heavily watered and are less of a rush to soak up the dye. We're going to use test tubes as our receptacles to hold the individual flowers. Just because we're uber cool, yeah that's right, but any receptacle will work. It doesn't need to be glass or even see-through at all. A cup or a pot will do. Once you've separated your flowers to your satisfaction, it's time to add water. If your flowers came with powdered plant food, feel free to mix that in. Don't get too fussed about the temperature. Tap water is just fine. Anything that isn't too hot will work. If you want to get fancy, use ice cold water. Some stems can get clogged with air bubbles. Using ice cold water dissolves these air bubbles and opens the vascular system for water uptake. On the other hand, if you're using plant food, some of the plant food instructions will alert you that you need to be using a warmer temperature in order to activate whatever it is exactly that they do. But at the end of the day, I think lukewarm water is just fine. That takes us to the fun part. It's time to add the different colored food dyes. There are no real rules here either. While I like the idea of a different color for each flower, if you have enough flowers, you might also try mixing your dyes to see what happens. It might surprise you. For us today, we're just going to work with green and red. And yellow. Nope, just green and red. Oh, and blue. Nope, just green and red. Okay, guys, come on. Work with me here. Work with me. This has got to be my favorite part, just watching the dyes diffuse into the clear water. Total awesomeness. Wait, what? No, no, no mixing. No mixing. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, no, we don't want to see any mixing. Sorry, that almost sounded like Excite Dog for a second there, didn't it? Oh, here comes the red. Say, that red's uh, maybe a little bit creepy there. You can really see the uh, diffusion patterns there. And then for this next one here, we're going to go with some blue, put in a couple drops of that. And then what we'll do is we'll mix it up and we'll go back to the red and put in a couple of drops of red to go with it. And it'll be interesting to see what we get. Will we get purple? Presumably red and blue makes purple. At least that's what I vaguely remember from art class. And then for this next one here, what we'll do is we'll go with some yellow. We'll put in a couple of drops of that. It's not quite as visual because you can't quite see the contrast. But what we'll do is then we're going to add some red on top of that. And it just kind of diffuses right in there. To me, it almost looks a little bit like a lava lamp. I know you youngins uh, won't know what I'm talking about. You'll have to go uh, all Google that to see what a lava lamp is. But it's something vaguely kind of like what you're looking at right now very sort of peaceful in a way. And then for this next one, we're going to go with green. And what we'll do is we'll add the blue second on top of it. And you can see that mix in together. Maybe turquoise? We'll just have to find out and see what our flower does with that. And here you can see us adding blue right into a yellow mixture. And the result looks almost immediately green to me which is kind of cool. I'd have to say I think we've got ourselves a bit of another uh, lava lamp in the making here. It's nice to watch. And you can kind of see the uh, red one next to it is almost completely diffused through. But I think we can all really agree on one that we absolutely have to do and that of course will be the every color one to see what happens. So for this next one, we'll put in all of the colors, maybe one at a time, just kind of drop them in there and let them mix together and see what kind of flower we're going to get. 
let me just real quick show you one last one here we got a blue going in there and on top of that we're going to add some red and once again see what happens if we get some kind of purple or a black morass or who knows exactly what we'll get and with that it's time to wait depending on how thirsty your flowers are it might be hours or days before you start to see results fortunately this is the magic of video where we can show you the results with just a few seconds a few hours later so after just a few hours we already see what I would call tinting very light pastel colors what we don't see at least in my untrained eye, as any of the color mixes we made. It all seems to be the base colors of the actual dyes themselves. And that kind of matches what we see below. You don't see any purples or turquoises. You tend to see the same base colors that we put in. And one day, sorry, I, I feel like I'm doing a digger road rescue here. Um, after a day, you really start to see what's going on here. You see the pinks, you see the blues, and you're still dealing with white flowers, but they're definitely getting colored. Congratulations. At this point, you've got yourself a conversation piece, which takes us to two days. And let me take a look here. At two days, you get this very funky pattern happening rippling around the edges and you can see the distinctive colors look at this you got a blue and a pink this one you've got sort of the bands of blue around it and here we've got a, another blue and a pink coming out it's very distinctive so one week one week is pretty much the final end point what you see is what you're going to get the first thing to note is that for us the petals never got that much darker than they looked after two days. I understand if you specifically use Gerbera daisies, you can get a more dramatic result, but we were pretty happy with how this turned out. You'll see on a totally non-scientific basis, the red dyes seem to get sucked up the fastest, but that could just be the particular flowers that we used. But here's what I really wanted to show you is you can see very distinctive banding of the different colors on the edges of the flowers kind of makes a neat little pattern and it's just kind of cool to see how that turns out and then that's pretty much the colored flower experiment after that all that's left to do is to dump the dyes and that's a lot of fun too so do feel free to share this video with anyone you think might be interested in giving this a try and if you do give it a whirl, feel free to let us know in the comments below how it went and if you have any tips for our fellow viewers. We love to learn. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like, you can always click a link to choose your next video. Perhaps my curmudgeonly views on the new curvy Barbie or my take on the semi-secret Costco code. Something to check out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>